All right, so <clears throat> I have lots of animations in my talk, so it should be interesting to see what happens with our, uh, uh, our slightly delayed network technology here. <clears throat> so I'm going to talk about why Web3 matters. And I am going to talk a lot about the metaverse, which I know uh, the press has, has had a lot of fun bashing, but uh, ignores the fundamental math and economics that suggest what's actually going on. So... First, let's just make sure we're all on the same page for definitions, right? Some people call Web3 the next internet, right? This is where we combine money, social dimensions, and identity um, into a decentralized framework, right? So Web2 is centralized. You've still got all of your data uh, flowing through central servers. Web3 is decentralized. That's a major shift. Um, Pure play Web3 companies are also uh, open source and open access. Um, so one of the big concerns about a lot of these systems is, uh, you know, they're, they're behind high walls, right? If you put a bunch of your data into Instagram or Facebook, good luck trying to move it anywhere else. In a Web3 world, your data is your data and you can take it with you. Um, in the U.S., for example, you can probably tell from my accent where I'm from, uh, you know, my health data goes into one hospital system and it's stuck there. If I want to move to another hospital system or a different doctor, um, they literally have to print out my medical record and then fax it to the other doctor because fax is a secure transmission uh, system. <laughs> so in the Web3 world, I would have my data uh, in, in an open access system, meaning I could move it around and I could decide on who has access to it and who doesn't. Um, and blockchain is, of course, a fundamental technology that makes it possible to do that cost effectively. So on, on the money side, you know, you hear a lot of talk about decentralized finance and, and NFTs, things like that. Um, this is really exciting because our old financial system is broken. Right? I recently had to move money. It was time sensitive. Uh, and you know, my bank failed in a simple money transfer transaction, but they didn't tell me for three days. And I'm trying to move the money. And I go back to the, the guy I was trying to move money to. And I tried to pay by credit card. The credit card system rejected the credit card. I had no way to complete the transaction. Whereas in a, in a decentralized finance world, I could get it done in seconds. They were actually making fun. I had emptied out my, my uh, USDT wallet. <laughs> if I had left some money in it, I would have been able to do the transaction in seconds. <clears throat> On the social side, um, part of what we are taking advantage of in the Web3 world is connectivity, right? We have all these communication networks that we've invested trillions of dollars into. Um, now we can start to get together through these networks, and Web3 helps facilitate that. Um, and finally identity, right? There are 850 million people in the world who still lack a legal identity. The old system of taking a photograph and using paper documents is too expensive to effectively get them into the identity system. If you don't have an identity, you can't open a bank account, you can't rent a flat, you can't travel. There are a host of things you can't do without a legal identity. <clears throat> Web3 allows you to create a digital identity that is privacy preserving. So now I can still conduct business without having to reveal everything about myself. It's federated, which helps it be more resilient. Um, and it's highly secure, right? There have been a lot of uh, uh, cases of identity theft from these centralized database systems. Um, I don't know if I have notifications turned on for my security. So my, my passwords periodically even on supposedly secure websites, get somehow appear on the dark web on a list. And I get a notification saying, oh, you need to change your password. We can better secure our identities and our data using Web3 technology. Which brings me to the metaverse, which I find to be one of the most fun and exciting aspects of Web3. Um, to quote Samuel Taylor Coleridge, it was a miracle of rare device, a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice. In the metaverse, we can kind of create whole new worlds to uh, uh, engage with, right? So the metaverse is not meta. This is a common misconception, 
okay? There's a whole host of other companies and platforms that are taking advantage of the bringing together of these different technologies. You know, as an investor, I'm really interested in the convergence theme. So I have about a third of my portfolio in, in Web3 and two thirds in AI. And the most interesting companies are at the intersection of those two. And I'll, I'll share one with you in a minute. Um, and it's quite large, right? So I get this question of, you know, is the metaverse dead? People ask me this question periodically, especially as I, you know, came out with a book called Basic Metaverse. Your copy is waiting for you at the back. Um, now, there are about half a billion people who are in the metaverse. It's generating over $60 billion US in 2022. In 10 years, it's expected to be 3 billion users, $10 trillion. So no, the metaverse is not dead. It just makes for a popular headline to bash on Meta, the company. What are some of the business models that are fueling that level of commerce? I'm going to try and click through this since we've got this lagging uh, clicker. Um, so, so yeah, there's hardware sales for metaverse devices, but there's also all sorts of uh, revenue streams that metaverse platforms have been able to enjoy from initial purchases to subscriptions, microtransactions, uh, downloadable content, and of course, inev inevitably where people's eyeballs go, advertising follows them. So uh, Star Citizen, for example, um, has generated more than $500 million of revenue in some of these transactions are not so micro, $3,000 US to buy a special uh, spaceship in this game. People are willing to spend significant amounts of money on their entertainment, and the metaverse provides a vehicle through which you can transact more seamlessly. Some of the major players that we look at, um, you know, on the platform side, you know, aside from Meta, um, everyone from Microsoft to HTC are engaged actively in the metaverse. Um, you've got Web3 pure plays ranging from the sandbox to OpenSea uh, who are, you know, enabling this and, and providing us the environments. Uh, and you have a number of hardware providers who have significant uh, metaverse businesses. and governments, I should add. So Neom, that new city in Saudi, the line, you know, it's this massive project. They have a very active metaverse initiative underway. They're recreating the whole city in the metaverse and doing all sorts of cool things around it. Um, something else that's interesting, and this is part of what fuels the commerce opportunity, um, it's 44% more addictive than regular video games. And the reason is that um, these 3D environments that are totally immersive engage your brain in a different way. They drive a much stronger emotional response. And this is important not only in consumer applications like games and entertainment, but also business applications. And I'll tell you in just a second about how Accenture is taking advantage of that. So Dom asked me to be very concrete about use cases. So I'm going to give you three examples uh, of where we're seeing this technology being actively used. One is, of course, in entertainment, and I'll, I'll share with you a little uh, demo about that, but also for corporate training uh, and industrial design. Right? This is stuff that's happening now, now. This is not some future state. So, uh, one of my portfolio companies, Kaleidico, has a game called Particle Inc. Um, Kaleidico just did their uh, uh, original NFT mint, uh, and uh, they sold out in under two hours uh, for, you know, like little characters and, and, you know, accoutrement that you can buy for your game character. Um, I, unfortunately, was not able to participate in this because J.P. Morgan Chase Bank would not let me transfer money to my Kraken account. So what's interesting about what they're doing is they're bringing together augmented reality. So imagine this is your phone display um, with artificial intelligence to be able to create really dynamic experiences. So what's happening here is that's a, a real candle and a real lighter and fake flame. And what you're doing is you're helping that game character melt the ice that is trapping that other character. So the system is able to detect what's happening in the physical environment around you and the characters react to it. So you see the ice starts to melt and then the other guy gets free.
Um, these characters, there's no audio on this, but these characters are reacting to the music from that boombox. So these guys dance in, in syncopation with the music. Uh, this character, you can see, is trying to reach a balloon that's sort of out of reach. So he tells you to move a physical object so he can climb up and grab the balloon. And this one is, it's a cool little trick, right? You're holding one of the characters on your hand and you're letting her sort of do a flip. The technology behind tracking a moving object and having it engaged that way is actually very difficult uh, uh, software to pull off. Um, so when I was doing my due diligence on this, they showed me a demo of a boat on moving water. It was an augmented reality boat on real moving water. When I showed my, my engineering uh, diligence resource this, she said to me, that is extremely difficult to do, to track and keep it looking natural. Uh, and so, so that's sort of what happens when you converge these technologies of bringing together LiDAR, uh, AI, and augmented reality. But you can imagine how addictive this game is going to be. This is like Pokemon Go with brains. Uh, so, so this is going to be launching uh, in 24. Okay, um, but you know, enough fun and games, let's talk about work. Web3 Metaverse has a tremendous role to play in the future of work. So Accenture faced an interesting problem during COVID, right? Because they're constantly hiring, they're hiring like tens of thousands of people a year and they have to train them. But how do you train people in a pandemic environment? So what they did is they bought 50,000 Oculus headsets and they recreated Accenture's offices in the metaverse. So they digitally scanned uh, a number of the Accenture offices, um, and then they allowed you to create your little avatar and have your training in the metaverse. One of the disadvantages of Zoom training is that, um, you know, that little postage stamp that you're looking at is really hard to focus on for hours on end. You tune out really quickly. It's much easier to keep your attention up here on the stage. And even with that, I already have lost a few of you in the, in the course of this just due to attention span, right? Human attention span is six or seven minutes. But it's, it's like 30 seconds when you're looking at a Zoom screen. So with the metaverse, we get you back to that embodied environment, right? And so, uh, you know, they, they, they called it the nth floor because it was like you step onto the elevator and you press the end button and you go up and then you step out. And, you know, they were even able to do a town hall with mixed reality. So they brought in a real video uh, of an Accenture executive and projected it into this sort of avatar environment. It's been so successful, they've now trained over 200,000 Accenture professionals with this format. So even after COVID restrictions ended, they've continued to use it. You no longer, it's a va massively reduced carbon footprint. You no longer have to fly people to a training center and put them up in a hotel and feed them. Much more cost effective. Uh, and um, you're still getting all of the, uh, the same, you know, according to the data they have, they're getting the same learning benefits and the same culture benefits of an in-person training. And of course, uh, today you don't design a car with clay anymore. It used to be when you would design a car, you would make a clay model of it, and then you would build a scale model, and then you'd build you know, the prototype of the car. Today, it's all done digitally and increasingly within uh, you know, virtualized environments. So as, and everything I've shown you is today's technology, not tomorrow's technology. This is stuff that's happening now. So as William Gibson famously said, the future is here, it's just unevenly distributed. And with that, uh, I think we are now gonna turn to the panel. The book is Basic Metaverse and it's right there on the back table so we've got copies for everybody. Thank you.